All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to your favorite fashion podcast, What's in the Closet? And today in the closet, we have the biggest, baddest, evilest fashion scandals and controversies of recent history, at least the ones that are relevant and interesting enough to talk about. So in this podcast, we'll be covering everything from the long history of fur and fashion to the various examples of cultural appropriation from major brands, to the recent Balenciaga scandal that is still fresh in all of our minds. So just to get right into it, let's dive into the deep and complicated tapestry that fur has woven for the fashion industry and the conflicting opinions that surround its use. So fur has been used since the very beginnings of fashion before it was even considered like an art form and we were just humans in caves who needed to be warm. The beginning use of fur started around 120,000 years ago. However, In the modern day, people have begun to question whether using genuine animal fur in clothes is ethical or not. So the anti-fur movement started to gain traction in the 80s and 90s, with the organization PETA being a noticeable spearhead for the movement. So they had many iconic protests, uh, either like storming runway shows, having signs held up, and one of their most iconic protests was our some representatives from PETA showing up naked and holding a sign that says we'd rather go naked than wear fur. So because protests like this brought the unethical use of fur to the eye of the public, the pressure was on major brands to remove fur from production. So one of the earliest brands to do this was Kelvin Klein, who in 1994 banned its fur use after seeing the PETA protests. And since then, many other big names have done the same, such as Prada, Chanel, Burberry, and Macy's. So because this conversation continued to grow rapidly as concern spread, the scale at which fur was banned went up. So instead of individual brands promising that they won't use fur, entire countries have decided to put into legislation an overarching ban on its uh, further use. So this is happening mostly in Europe with countries like France, the UK, the Netherlands, and Italy having a ban, but also California became the first US state to have a ban in 2019. But beyond just like the big wigs and the people who decide what's allowed and what's not, the public has also very strong opinions on the use of fur. So according to a poll run by Vogue Business, two thirds of British adults and 47% of American adults Um, considered fur to be inappropriate to use, showing that the rough majority of people also believe that it's unethical to use real animal fur in clothing. So now that we've covered the details on how fur controversy has been handled by various countries, groups, people, whatever, uh, now let's dive into the reason why this topic is so contentious. So because if you don't know the background on the fur industry, I'm sure you're wondering right now, like, what's the big deal? Who, why, why do we care that much? The big deal is the way that these animals are being treated so that their fur can be harvested. Uh, So as it says in a report um, from goodonyou.eco, 95% of fur that's being produced comes from wire trap farms um, that on top of being extremely cruel to the animals that are being trapped there, there's also a very negative environmental impact because a lot of pollutants get released during the production of fur uh, from manure to waste runoff that gets into the soil and even the water supply. So on top of the impact that it has for the natural environment, it also has severe impacts on the animal kingdom. For example, an animal that everyone knows, everyone loves it, the koala, almost went completely extinct, dead from the world due to it being exploited for fur. Um, Luckily, People noticed before this happened, put it on the endangered species list, and now they have made somewhat of a recovery. They're still hanging in there. Unfortunately, another species, the Two Lake Wallaby, was not so lucky. They went completely extinct uh, due to them being overhunted for fur, and now they're gone. You'll never see them again. So beyond what happened to them when they died um, and the amount of deaths, how they died is the real tragedy of the fur industry. So the most common ways of farming animals for fur include electrocution, gassing them, uh, sometimes just putting them in cages until they die, which often led to animals gnawing off their own limbs to try and escape from traps, which is 
just completely cruel and the industry just doesn't care about any of these animals that are completely innocent and just don't deserve to be in these living conditions. Um, so yeah, that was an overview on how fur has become such a hot topic just because of how awful it is to the environment and animals alike. So before we go into the next big controversy, which is Balenciaga, um, let's do an overview of some other just general controversies that ha tend to happen pretty frequently in the fashion world, which is largely surrounding cultural appropriation. So I'm just going to kind of go quick through this and give you some examples of cultural appropriation that happen. Um, so one of the more common ones, unfortunately, is blackface, which has been seen in many runway shows, either in garments or the makeup that they use. Uh, for example, the Claudia Gatungo Fall Winter 2015 show, um, the models had their eyes, faces, and necks all painted black with glitter on it. And that got a pretty immediate reaction from people. This didn't really end up being like a huge controversy that's super famous. I mean, I'd never heard of it until I started researching for this podcast. I'm sure you haven't heard of it either. But people were just kind of sick and tired of it because it's like, I mean, they said this in 2015, it's 2015, why are we still doing this? And now it's even more prevalent. Like people have been saying this for so many years in so many different iterations. Blackface is not cool. Don't do that. Um, so yeah, and another example of blackface is more recently. So Gucci did a fashion show in 2019 where one of the garments was a turtleneck sweater that you pull up and Basically, uh, it is a caricature, or it makes you look like a caricature of a black person from the early 1900s, which is not chill, not cool. People agreed that it was not chill, to say the least. Um, people were very upset, and it got a lot of backlash against the brand. Um, so they quickly released a statement, pulled it off of production, off of all in-person stores, off of online, off the runways. And so that was a good example of the people fighting back and saying, this is not good. And the brand being like, okay, okay. But that is not to say that Gucci has not had other controversies, but we will not be covering that today. And finally, one of the other big aspects of cultural appropriation is in hair. So this is another one that's very common. Uh, for example, Marc Jacobs, there was a show that he did where all the models had big updos of dreadlocks in all different colors, which people felt weird about. And then also Comte de Garçon did a, a show with cornrows and a bunch of the white models' hairs. The, the key factor is these models are all white or at least not black. Okay, so now that we've done that little segment about cultural appropriation and also a deeper overview on the use of fur, let's turn to Balenciaga. So, in November of 2022, Balenciaga posted an ad campaign uh, which featured kids holding teddy bears that appeared to be dressed in BDSM clothing, uh, chokers and harnesses and all that. Um, and people saw this and were like, what are those doing next to these kids? Why are you putting that in an ad campaign? Uh, and called Balenciaga out for sexualizing children exploiting minors, all that kind of stuff. All right, my apologies about the cutoff. There were some technical issues, but they should be all fixed now. Um, so yeah, uh, continuing about Balenciaga, um, the bears in that ad campaign were not the only aspect of this controversy. So Balenciaga released another ad campaign around the same time, which featured models in an office building. And on the desk, there was papers strewn everywhere. And when people zoomed in, they saw that it was Supreme Court documents about the use of child pornography. So this immediately sent the internet into a spiral saying that the brand was a part of the Illuminati and this was just one piece of the infinite puzzle of the matrix and the evils of Hollywood and all of that stuff just kind of burst into a giant fireball in front of Balenciaga's face. And yeah, the reaction to this was very extreme because it was a very extreme topic that was being discussed. Child pornography is not something that should be taken lightly. Um, so people canceled the brand, said Balenciaga is done. It's out of here. It's over. 
Uh, people threw away their items that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars. They burned them, they destroyed them, they got rid of them in any way possible to show that they were not supporting this brand anymore. Um, however, as it happens with most cancellations, this didn't really stick. I mean, it's just around six months later now, and it seems to be pretty much back to normal. Um, because ignorance is bliss, whatever, people don't really care that much, which is kind of stupid. Like, if you're gonna stand up for something, stand up for it. Um, but yeah, so that was something very big that happened in recent history, and we will see how that continues to play out and what fashion controversies continue to happen in the future, whether history is repeated or someone finds out a new and exciting way to mess up. Uh, but yeah, I this was my overview of the biggest fashion controversies in recent history. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something today. Uh, you can follow me on my various Instagrams or this YouTube down below. Drop a like, leave a comment. Tell me your favorite fashion controversy. Tell me your favorite food, what you dreamt last night. I don't know. Give me something. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.